OK, let's move on to question two. Now we're moving into pseudocode, which uh, we all love. So let's have a look at this particular problem here, this algorithm here. So it says to us here, the algorithm has been developed to automate the quantity of dog biscuits to put in a dog bowl at certain times of the day. The algorithm contains an error. So we're obviously going to have to find that error at some point. Let's have a look at what the algorithm is doing. So user input is assigned to time. If time equals breakfast, then we set Q to be 1. Otherwise, else, if time equals lunch, then we set Q to be 4. Otherwise, else, if time equals dinner, then we set A to be 2. And that's curious. Before, we've been setting Q to be a number, and suddenly this A has appeared. I wonder what that could be. Else, so in other words, if none of those things happen, then we output time not recognized. So if the person doesn't enter breakfast, lunch or dinner, it'll give us this message here. End if we finish doing all these stuff here. Now we enter another part of the algorithm. For, now remember for is what we call definite iteration. In other words, it's going to repeat a definite number of times. The number of times it's going to repeat is from 1 to Q. So whatever Q number got entered here, it will then move from 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, until we get to whatever Q is. If N, which is the number here, which is 1 to start with, then 2, then 3, then 4, and so on, if that number is less than 3, then we dispense biscuit. Now, this is some kind of subroutine, a function. In other words, another small program somewhere else. And we send it the value chewies. So in other words, it's going to go and do that thing, but with the value chewies. If it's not less than 3, if n is not less than 3, then we dispense biscuits. Again, same, same subroutine. But instead of sending it the value chewies, we're going to send it the value crunchy. We finish that if part. We finish the for part. Let's work out what's going on here. So first question. Shade one lozenge which shows the line number where selection is first used. Selection, a decision made between two choices. So selection, we always see where the word if occurs. So if has first occurred here, so it occurs first in line number two. Selection is if. Let's have a look at the next question. Shade one lozenge which shows the line number where iteration is first used in the algorithm. Iteration means looping, repeating, so where did we first come across looping or repeating? Well, it's not anywhere here. This is all straight through. When we get to here, though, four is a kind of iteration, definite iteration, which repeats. Over. So the first place we find iteration is in line 11. So C, line 11. Next question. Shade one lozenge which shows how many times the subroutine dispense biscuit would be called if the user input is breakfast. Let's go back to the algorithm. And we'll see here. If the time equals breakfast, then Q is assigned the value 1. So Q is now got the value 1. None of this then needs to apply because we've already found out that time equals breakfast. So Q now has the value 1 when we get to the end here. We repeat for N from 1 to Q. Q is equal to 1. So it's going to repeat from 1 up to 1. Well, we're only going to do it once then because 1, does it need to go to 2? No. So the loop ends. So for 1 to 1 means we only do it once. So n is going to be 1 the first time through. 
Is n less than 3? Yes, it is. So we're going to call the subroutine dispense biscuits now. We go back. Does n get to 2? No, because we said that q, the highest value, is 1. We've only called the subroutine dispense biscuits once. So the answer is we need one subroutine call. Next question. Shade 1 lozenge, which shows the data type. Data type remembers the kind of data that is put into the variable time in the algorithm shown in figure 1. Now, it would be very tempting to write date and time because it's got the word time in it. But let's go back and look at what kind of data gets put into the variable time. So when time gets user input, if time equals, and we've got a word being used inside speech marks. So text inside speech marks is the string data type. So the correct answer to this question is string. Let's move on. Now we're going to move away from the multiple choice type questions. And the first question we get here, state how many times the subroutine dispense biscuit will be called with the parameter chewies. So only when dispense biscuit has chewies after it, if the user input is lunch. Let's go back and look at our algorithm again. So if we enter lunch, so time, user input, user input is lunch if time equals breakfast it's not so we move on if time equals lunch yes it is so q is assigned the value four q is now four not that not that so now we fall out the bottom q we know now is four so n is going to go from one to four it's going to go n is one n is two n is three n is 4, that's it, out we go. So, n is 1, is n less than 3? Yes, so we'll call dispense biscuits with chewies. That's once. It's not going to do that because n was less than 3. Back we go. n is now 2. Is 2 less than 3? Yes, it is. So we're going to dispense biscuits chewies. Again, we're going to do the dispense biscuit subroutine with the parameter chewies. So that's twice. Back we go again. N is now 3. Is 3 less than 3? No, it's not. So we dispense biscuits crunchy. We do the alternative. Dispense biscuits crunchy. Not this one, this one. Back we go again. N is now 4. Is N less than 3? No, it's not. So now we'll do this one. Back we go again. N has reached its limit, which is 4. So do we stop? We've only done this one, dispense biscuits, chewies, twice. So the correct answer is two. State how many possible values the result of the comparison time equals dinner could have in the algorithm shown. Now time equals dinner is a statement that can only be true or false. We've said here, if time equals dinner. Is time equal dinner or is time not equal to dinner? Those are the only two choices you've got. This is a Boolean expression. In other words, it's an expression that can only give an answer true or false. So the only, it has two possible values, true or false. The programmer realizes they have made a mistake. State the line number of the algorithm shown where the error has been made. Well, when we were looking through it earlier, and it's always a good idea to have a quick look through to try and work out what the algorithm is actually trying to achieve. So when we looked through, we said Q is assigned the value 1, or Q is assigned the value 4, then suddenly this variable A came out of nowhere. A is assigned the value 2. Well, that's ridiculous because A is never used again. So the error must be in line 7. So the error is in line 7. And then we're asked to say, how do we correct that error? Well, it seems to me, if we look at it, 
if we've been assigning values to Q here and here, it seems logical that we should be assigning the value 2 to Q here, not to A. So the correct line of code would be Q is assigned the value 2.